Good morning, everybody. I'm so excited when y'all look over here beside me is sitting beautiful Selena Hales, who is doing amazingly well. When I see your color, you look amazing. You didn't get to get chemo this week no, because something was a little bit off. Yeah, my, my numbers came in a little too low and, and I you know commend the doctors and the staff there at the Georgia Cancer Center in Canton where I go for my treatment. That's where mama went. Okay, yeah. 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 Well, Dr. Zemsky is my oncologist and they really do a good job keeping up with my numbers and making sure, and it's not just one part of the blood work, they look at all of it and sometimes mm -hmm. this one's good and that one's bad and so that's kind of what happened this time. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully I just, it was the, my body's way of saying you need a break yeah. and yeah. I'm making Good and you were on treatment six? This would have been my sixth treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and then they were going to rescan me to see if the therapy had been working well and I had mm -hmm. responded well, stopping the growth or killing mm -hmm. the cancers. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're hoping for. And mm -hmm. in, in lieu of that, I'll get six more treatments. So mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping for those six more. Right. And we have to say good morning to somebody else who is a miracle child here at ETC. Danny Hensley has gone the same process he you have has. gone through. And he is getting that six more, but he's doing so well. And he is one of those miracle children too. Yes. Because he is God's child. He is. He's a servant. Amazing. I can, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I have not met he or his wife personally, but we've talked on the phone and, and through social media. And had you not mentioned him mm -hmm. yourself, I was going to, going to have to mention him today too. Mm -hmm. he's, he's given me some great advice. He actually, he and his wife shared with me some holistic treatment that they have done and mm -hmm. I have implemented. And I really feel like that's helped me too. So mm -hmm. uh, they're just appear to be a wonderful couple and I, lo I look forward to meeting yeah. them. Well, I asked her today because I have some things I need to do and I need an extra driver. I said, are you okay to drive? Well, she's okay to run the marathon. <laughs> she's okay to do the Daytona 500. You know, not quite, not you quite. are doing amazingly well and you've had a lot of prayers. I have. A lot of prayers. I have. And you know, I, I have to say when the, the C word came my way, it was devastating because I was alone. Mm -hmm. I've driven myself to the ER in Canton mm -hmm. and within two Did hours. Did they know, really? No, they didn't know. Um, I had seen my primary care physician about a week or so prior and we were doing some changes of some medications and sort of treating it like it might be an ulcer mm -hmm. and she put me on a stomach medication to hopefully buffer that. Was it that. Nexium? No, it was Pantoprazole, which is like a Pepsi or something, mm -hmm, but it was prescription mm -hmm. strength. So she said, you know, we got to do this for a week and then your insurance will pay for your CT scan and we'll go from there if you're still mm -hmm. having problems. And I didn't make it. I hate when people say those words. I, you know, we have to do so and so or is your insurance not going to like it. Look, let your doctor make the decision. Don't let some dude sitting behind a desk <laughs> make a decision on your life altering things. That's is it. that not crazy? It is crazy and it makes you mad. Yeah, it does. yeah, yeah. But at and any rate. Stop I, <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, I didn't make it another week, and um, by Friday morning, I was nauseated and, and you know, vomiting and whatnot, and I, I reached out to my primary care once again and made the decision just to go on to an ER. Yeah. And when I yeah. got there, I drove myself down there, and um, COVID restrictions wasn't going to let Rick come in with me anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and within two hours, they scanned me and came in the room and gave me that devastating news that it was stage four pancreatic cancer. And that it in an ER, they told you that. Yeah, after the CT scan, wow. they picked up on it on the scan. Wow. Um, and it had already engulfed the spleen. Did they show the you the scan? Mm -hmm. They did later, but um, wow. And it also had already metastasized to the liver. So. So I had you're like sitting there by patients. yourself mm -hmm. in the ER. Yes. And Holy doctor, cow! Yeah, it was frightening. I mean, I cried for a minute, and then I was okay for a minute. And, you know, my whole thing was, <clears throat> after the shock, I was never angry. And, or angry at God for why me, why me, never any of that. But this wasn't supposed to happen to me because mm -hmm. by nature I'm the caregiver. Yeah, yeah. And I've always taken care of, you know, Rick and, and my mother. I do her mm -hmm. infusions at mm -hmm. home. I mm -hmm. sat with an elderly lady. I took care of my grandmother till she, you know, part time while mm -hmm. till she passed. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was not supposed to happen to me. Yeah, yeah. But it did. Yeah, yeah. And then I realized that you've never called out for help because you have been the helper. Yeah, I hear that's it's hard. weird it's for hard you, isn't for it? To yeah, to, to yeah. receive help yeah. because I am the giver, the, yeah. the caregiver. Yeah. But that's not to pat my back. It's just that's just my, that's life. my passion. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, the shoe's on the other foot now, and um, I actually feel so good. I feel guilty about not trying to work or do things, and my doctor's like, "Oh no, ma'am." 
Yeah. You, and you're and not they, done. You're, yeah. you're not, you got to focus on you for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. So I've decided that I'm going to enjoy life. Um, I could use a traveling secretary. <laughs> <laughs> you sure could. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was so funny. I, and I just, I hate that it, I mean, I love it because I love my job, but it's like, you know, and you got to be on top you of it. Take you you got to keep these appointments going and you got to do it. And I'm like, and then my partner sends me a message and she says, and can you show the car light at two o'clock? I'm going, I can't. I've got to be in Canton at 2.30. I think I, I can't. heard you promise somebody you were going to be in two places at yeah, the same hour. I and oh, where are you going to do that? How well, are you they're only do that? three miles apart. So <laughs> they're only three miles apart. But, but honestly, you do feel well enough that you do feel like you could be doing something. Could you start today to do your journey in writing and I maybe have, do that. Yeah, I have started, you know, making notes from day one. I've made mm -hmm, notes on mm -hmm. how the treatments are affecting me and this, that and the other or some of the emotional How feelings. the news of sitting in an ER affected yeah, you. Yeah. I mean that's just Doctor Lewis. Hard. Uh, Doctor Lewis was the doctor's name that came in and gave me that news, and I just looked at him, and you know, because I worked in a hospital setting for a number of years after going to nursing school, and mm -hmm. then worked in respiratory therapy, and I've been present when people passed away, and I've been there when they delivered the news and that kind of stuff, but it never really affected me until it was me like mm -hmm. this, and so mm -hmm. I said, you know, how did you do that? He was so compassionate. He held mm -hmm. my hand. He stayed with me for about a half an hour. Really? Um, he let me cry for a minute, and then we'd talk a minute, you know. Yeah, so. Yeah. I just received amazing care from Northside Cherokee, and um, yeah, that's yeah. where my team of doctors are. And I even asked for a second opinion, not because I distrusted right, my doctor. Right. I just wanted to make sure that the type of treatment she was wanting to do for me would be what another oncologist would do for me as well. Mm -hmm. So she sent me to Emory, and that doctor really put things in perspective for me in a sweet kind of way. He said, you know, we are all born terminal. We just mm -hmm. don't know what it's going to be from. Mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And the other thing he said to me was, I'm not going to pretend to know your expiration date. We all have an expiration date, and mm -hmm. only God knows that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he said, you go home, and you get your affairs in order, as any responsible adult should do, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be getting the people that you take care of, provided care for, in the right. event you get unable to really do those things for them, right. and as well as the other ultimate things that one needs to do for the end of life. But he said, you go home and live mm -hmm. and don't worry about dying because dying's going to find you either way. Yeah. And I just really loved his attitude and that's been my attitude. Yeah. Um, well, I got to tell y'all, if, if we had had the police following us on the <gasps> golf cart, we had so much fun and we giggled and then our hair looked like we'd been shot out of a cannon and Rick wants to take our picture. Oh, of course. And we look like, ah, you know, like this. <laughs> but you have not stopped loving life, living life and enjoying every single moment. The first two weeks after treatment started in, on January the 24th um, was horrible. Mm -hmm. The whole two week interval, my treatments are every two weeks. Um, and the opposite week of a treatment, I still go in and get blood work done. So every Monday I have to see, a, have to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. But the first two weeks was really, really bad. It was everything they promised me it would be and then some. Mm -hmm. But after that, my pain changed. And I didn't really know at the time if it was because the chemo was working so quickly or if it was the medication. They had me on some really strong medicine, 30 mm -hmm. milligrams of morphine twice a day wow. every 12 hours. And, and I took it as, as, yeah. need, you know, yeah. as it was ordered. And they actually gave me hydrocodone for breakthrough pain. And uh, in the beginning, I needed that too. I was yeah. in terrible pain. I, I was with you a couple of times when you could see the pain oh. in your face, but today you no, just look, I'm great. it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. After the first 30 days of medication, she decreased my dosages to half that. And at some point I said to Rick, you know, I feel so good. I just don't think I need this medicine. And um, I said, so the only way to know it is to skip it one day mm -hmm, and just mm -hmm. see how I do. So February the 26th, I went to a singing in Canton or Woodstock area for the Joy Masters mm -hmm. Memorial for Jerry mm -hmm. Forrester. And um, that was a very spiritually motivated event. And that night I took my medicine when I got home and the following morning on Sunday I didn't take it and I haven't had another pain pill. Wow. I'm in zero I'm getting, pain. Oh my God. God is so good to me. I'm telling you between the prayers and the treatment and the, you know, the chemo and the, the supplements and things that I'm doing, God's got me right there mm -hmm. beyond mm -hmm. a shadow of a doubt. And um, I'm just blessed. Mm -hmm. I cannot say enough. Well, and, and we have had conversations that God's plan is perfect. And I just, you know, that time of year when you lose a child and then this starts happening to you 
and I just felt like I had to step in and I had to be there, whatever I could do, you yeah. know? And, and I said it was so weird because you're young and you're healthy and you're, and you just think, how did this happen to her? And we talked about this a little bit before we went live. You really didn't have any side effects that it would have said, you need to go get a scan. Mm -hmm. no, no, I actually had gone to my doctors, my cardiologist, the, the female doctor, the, the primary care, everybody at the first of December. Mm -hmm. And my liver enzymes were great. Uh, everything was normal, a clean bill of health going into the new That's year. Crazy. But I had started having some abdominal pain and I was just trying to get it figured out. And then yeah. I had COVID again during the Christmas holidays. So I scheduled my doctor's appointment with my primary care after my five days of quarantine had, had expired. And so when I got there that day, she addressed everything. And like I said a minute ago, we went through all the hoops and I ended up in the ER. But mm -hmm. to be you know, fine in December, blood work wise, and then in January be told you have stage four. Four. You know, you, yeah. know, you really thought, you think of pancreatic cancer and the liver as a death sentence. Mm -hmm. And it was at one time. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not the case so much anymore. Mm -mm. And mm -mm. I'm thankful for that. And I really believe in my heart that God's got this and I am not gonna, you know, it may come back and get me at a mm -hmm. later day, yeah. but I really think I'm going to beat it. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yay. And we're encouraged by I'm that. I'm a winner either way. Yes. But yes. Yes. And we have a song we want to do because without his amazing grace, you know, I know, I wouldn't be here. Um, there are times in our life that we just think this is the end of our life. This is all we have and our expiration date is coming. And then this miracle occurs. Yeah. And, and today somebody was talking about angels and I said, I really feel angels around me. Yes. And um, today is a birthday. Um, it's Don's father's birthday. And, and even though at times he could be a little tough, Difficult. a little tough, yeah. <laughs> she said, Mama, in all my whole life, as his child, as your child, all he had to say about you was to praise you and to, and to love you and to honor you. And I thought, isn't that weird? Because I never knew that about him. And she said, all my life, my father never said anything negative about you. And she said, it hurts me to think that you are ever not precious to someone. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's so weird because he never said things like right, that. Right. And for her to remember that as a child, and it really blessed me. Yes. So we are blessed. Yes. We are blessed. And sometimes it comes in a weird way because she was squalling her eyes out this morning and having a hard day. And then she said, Mom, I just wanted to tell you, you know, you are you are loved and you are blessed. And, and sometimes we forget that, that we're mm -hmm. special and, and we're we're his. Well, you are special, Sherry. You have mm -hmm. always, always supported us as Angel Spirit. I mean, you gave me our, you gave us our name, Yay! essentially, you and Charlene. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, it was just a, a, a memorable day, and you've been a part of my life even and, before and Angel without, Spirit. And without Fred Wyndham, we would never have gone anywhere. No. He took you to television everywhere, and people just loved it. So we to, to our we, Angel Fred, who's watching yes, us. Yes, yes, yeah, he's, he's an he's amazing man. So, here we go. We're going to enjoy a song, uh, Amazing Grace, and then we're going to come back, do a commercial break, and then we're going to we're going to share a mini Angel Spirit concert with y'all okay. because I'll tell you a little secret. This started because I was coming up the road and I was listening to Tammy Wynette yesterday. <laughs> and I was getting angry. And it was stand by your man, huh? And then it was divorce, huh? And then it was apartment number nine. And then it was woman to woman. And I thought, oh, that one's a good one. And then I called her and I said, hey, we got to do a show about the music sets the tone and we're going to go to gospel music. So, so we're going to go to gospel music. But I laughed and I said, you know, just like Fred naming this project that he did, we'll have a good time. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to do mm -hmm. every you single do. day. And as we're coming up the road this morning and I'm laughing and talking to different people and can't remember who I'm talking to and which phone. And, and it's just, we gotta have a good time in this you life. Do. Life yeah. is too short. Yep, absolutely. Well, short. here we go, Amazing Grace. We're inside High Shoals Baptist Church now. I'm on top of Amicalola Falls. This is in memory of Clarence Stanley who made the church who made this church because of his love for his church family and his savior. How cool was this? <clears throat> and again, here's a view out the window. And I don't know where the lights are. Is it, I don't know if it has lights. 
kind of dark in here today because it's a gloomy day, but it's a beautiful day to visit. Look at these handmade pews. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. How awesome is this? And everybody has their little cushions. That is so sweet. That is so sweet. You can tell that these are handmade cushions by church members who know that these pews are hard to sit on. But their hearts in this church, and after many, many years, you know, these are pews up and down. They, they got a lot of seats in here for a small church. It is really, really cool. And again, this is what you see when you look outside. You're absolutely on top of the mountain where Amicola Falls is. And it's just really, really cool. This is awesome. Has a little bit of heat on, so on a cool day like today. And again, here's a little bit about the church when they have meetings. And I don't know how often they have services. And honestly, I don't see a light switch, so I don't know if they have electricity or not. They do have gas. They have propane gas because they have heat in here. So, and they do have a cemetery that has a lot of folks in the cemetery. You can see out here from the cemetery. And again, this is High Shoals Baptist Church. Look at that water fountain out there. How cool is this? This church is a labor of love. A lot of people came together to build this church and to maintain it and still have church services here. It's really, really cool. This is what, I guess, Primitive Baptist and just really, really neat. I don't know what year it was founded, but would that be called the Mourner's Bench right there in front of the pulpit? And here you go. This is what the pastor would see when he stood here to preach. And again, they're ready for the Christmas holidays. So if you're in the area, you might check out their schedule because it looks like they're getting ready for a Christmas service. So you might come up tomorrow. Tomorrow is not supposed to rain. It's supposed to be a beautiful day in Georgia. So why not come up to Amicalola Falls and visit this really cool Primitive Baptist Church at the top of Amicalola Falls. Amazing how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. His grace that brought me. Yeah. 
Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Jay, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi, not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Yay. Okay, I'm sitting by a miracle. You're a miracle. You're a miracle. You look amazing. <laughs> you look great. You have been the caretaker for over six years of your husband, who was truly a miracle. Yeah. And um, when you're paralyzed from the neck down and sent to the Shepherd Center, you just assume that you're done. You just don't know what's coming up. No. Mm -mm. And Rick now, I saw him walking around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he does great. He's, he's hunting today. He's turkey hunting today. That's all he thinks yes. about is hunting, deer hunting and turkey hunting. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. hey, that's yeah. great. I'm yeah. so thankful that we are where we are instead of where we were. Yep. We don't complain. How many years before he could walk? Oh, he walked much sooner than they thought that he would. I mean, they had told him initially that, you know, they would have him up within about a year. Mm -hmm. And it was really like three or four weeks that he stood with assistance. Wow at a parallel bars and took eight wobbly, wobbly steps that made me rejoice. Wow. Um, and so wow. he really defied all the odds. Now he's had about 17 procedures of, of being put to sleep and various things because of, of other health issues he has, but he is a walking miracle. And mm -hmm. he said, you know, it's just like God took him out of that patrol car and put him in the ditch and didn't even let him hurt because he was paralyzed. And he's like, I'm not done with you. I'm going to turn your rudders and blow the wind in your sails and I'm going to send you to the shepherd to work for me and tell everybody what a miracle that you are because God is still in control. Oh, yeah. And you know, thank you for having me here today. This is Easter Sunday weekend. It is. And without is. that <coughs> and them coming out of that tomb, mm -hmm. where would we be? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm so glad that you said that because I have something that Matt Dibler did and we put it on YouTube, and I want to encourage everybody to go to my YouTube. It's just Sherry Martin, and, and Google put Matt Dibler Fields of the Wood, and watch that, because Matt didn't know, and as he was speaking, we looked down there, and there's that tomb, mm. and that tomb is empty, and there's nobody down there. I've never been there before. Oh, you go. have not. Y'all got to go. Mm -hmm. You got to go. You got to go. 
I, I just love to sit there on those steps and just look at all this yeah, amazing stuff beauty. and to see that tomb. But Easter is the week and, and it is, there are miracles every single day and we always talk about that miracle, that miracle of Jesus' birth, number one, then the next miracle of, of his resurrection. Yes. But the resurrection changed everybody's life. It did. Changed everybody's life. He did. And when Rick came back from what truly could have been the dead, he mm -hmm. was he was laying there, neck down, paralyzed. Would you ever feel hopelessness, or were you always encouraged? I didn't. I was always encouraged. I think I I was, I just I don't know. I just never. He was never down and out, so I didn't get down and out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We were fatigued and tired, yes, but I tell you what, our kids, between the, the two families, we have five kids, and so they really took the reins mm -hmm. and, and made a difference for us at home, took care of everything at home, and and um, it was just, we have a wonderful family. All mm -hmm. five of our kids are just mm -hmm. great. And the grandbabies, we have 10, nine, yeah, one on the way, so yeah, we're gonna have yeah, 10, yeah, yeah. and we love them all. <laughs> now, they're my reason for fighting. Today, today, as um, you told me a couple of weeks ago, you made your funeral arrangements. We did. Well, it's something we all need to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, because we all need to know that going home today, we could get hit head on by a drunk driver. Going home today, something could change. Going home today, we could have an aneurysm. Um, it's so important to plan your life, but I, I did a thing on our motorhome that said, don't plan your life, live your life. You are truly living your life we now. Are. We yeah. are, every yeah. day like it's our last. Mm -hmm. And one thing I know that Rick does every single morning, and it's, if I don't hear him do it, I'm thinking, what happened? Mm -hmm. The minute his feet hit the floor, he says, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he does thank him because there yeah. was a time he couldn't feel the floor under his feet, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I thank Jesus every day too. So it's, um, it's been a, a wild ride. It and has. would we change it? <clears throat> Probably not. No. I think that we have had an impact on people, and it's not to toot our horns, but you know everybody knows the policeman, and he mm -hmm. was a, a police officer, a deputy, and so mm -hmm. everybody was praying for him, and the public support that we received when he was injured was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And it's been just as amazing for myself with this new diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I say that there are people praying for me from coast to coast, oh, I'm yeah. serious oh, yeah. because yeah. You know, I have around a, the world, yeah, young lady, I mean, around the world. It's, it's a friend of mine, her home office, the, the company she worked for is in California. Mm -hmm. So there's California praying. Mm -hmm. I have a friend whose daughter's boyfriend lives in Canada, so there's mm -hmm. Canada praying. Well, Juliet it's McDonald just, is watching us from South Africa today, oh, wow. and they're praying for so, you. And, and we just think about this. We, we do understand that he hears even that one small <coughs> voice, but he really <coughs> likes to hear a bunch of voices. You know, in you today's know? times where people have gotten away from church, whether it be because COVID closed the doors or mm -hmm. whatever, I think they forget, they've forgotten how to pray or that they need to pray. Mm -hmm. And so if God chose me to bear this burden of, of cancer, mm -hmm. so be it. It's a demonic disease. Mm -hmm. It's of, of the devil, mm -hmm. but God chose me to bear it and I can and I will because of him. He strengthens me and I, you know, it's got people praying again. They're oh, turning yeah. to who he that is most important. And so um, I just can't, It's kind of I sit and shake my head a yeah. lot. Remember after 9-11, yeah. how people yeah. loved each other again. Yes. It's like it takes something a life disaster, altering. something horrible, then all of a sudden we look at life and say, oh, yeah, oh, and, and, and we've had this conversation, oh, 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 okay. And the one <laughs> thing know? I do want to do yeah. and the one thing I wanted to change about myself the most was I do not want anybody, I don't want anybody to assume, I don't want to assume that everybody knows how I feel about them. I want to tell you I love yeah. you. Yeah. I love yeah. you. Yeah. I yeah. thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah. I want them to know. Right. And so I'm not afraid to say I love you yeah, to, to yeah. those people who mean something to yeah. me. Well, uh, yesterday somebody had posted something and it said, when you talk to someone, be sure and say something that if they were killed the next moment, that you wouldn't have said something detrimental or mean or hurtful to them. And, and I, you know, because I've been in, I was in an auto accident that was really, it, it was kind of one of those wake up calls because 
I thought, that could have been the end of my life. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. And I thought about that afterwards. I mean, we were in Kenstone Hospital like 30 days. Oh, wow. And I was thinking all that time, well, what's the last thing I said to my kids when I, they went out the door? What's the last thing I said? What You know, because you think about that when you end up laying in an emergency room yeah. and then you're there. I was there for my 30th birthday, actually. It was when we owned the iron skillet. And, and it was so crazy because it goes through your head. What's the last thing you said to that mm -hmm. child when they got on the bus that day? Mm -hmm. Or what's, what's the last thing you said? So keep it kind and, and you know, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's important. And sometimes people don't live by that. Yeah. But it's, it's sad because you remember the last thing that was either shouted at you, screamed at you, or spoken to you. You do, <laughs> yeah, you do. You, know, and, you don't forget. You know, that's one of the things that you can't take back. The harsh mm -mm. words, you mm -hmm. know, they're they're irretrievable, you know. Right. You have to forgive somebody for those yep. things, but yep. you don't forget them. Well, today, today, April the 13th, is um, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and he will make your path straight. Do you think your path is pretty straight, young lady? Well, it's never perfect, I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> but I try to always give thanks. I know mm -hmm. where my help comes from, and it's just, um, I can never thank him enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never thank him enough. Well, when we, when we listen to and watch the three of y'all, Angel Spirit, um, your mom was just like, I love when she does Glory Road. I uh -huh. just, you know, she bounces I, all over. I love that song. And I loved um, We'll Have a Good Time. And so today we want to share some of Angel Spirit's amazing concert. This was provided because my dear friend Fred Wyndham said, let's do this and raise some money for Hans Ruford. And it not only raised money for him, it raised awareness. He is 15 years Hans Strong and yes. cancer free. So think about that, y'all. And this was an event when we did this, we were selling his t-shirts, we were selling his cookbooks, but we were raising awareness. And this church was so full of people and people came from everywhere and we all were praying for Hans. And from that, we have learned that we can be our brother's keeper. Yes. And you've seen that because yes. people people were calling me like, can you bring me two CDs? Can it? Can you? And I'd say, well, where do you live? Well, over here behind Big Canoe on this dirt road. Sure. And I'd drive over there and I'd uh, go up that driveway, you know. And I'm like, and they said, thank you so much for doing this and thank you for telling us Selena's story. So every family is going to get that cancer diagnosis. Somewhere. Somebody in yeah. somebody's family is going to get the cancer diagnosis. <coughs> and we hope that your way of dealing with it will be a path for them to maybe follow I hope and to so. stay positive. I yeah. hope so. I yeah. mean, if I can do anything to help anybody, then my life is not in vain. So. Um, and for y'all who have her CDs when she had lots of hair, uh -huh. she ain't got lots of hair no more. No, I don't but probably. she still got some. I'm probably showing, blinding <laughs> the cameraman. <laughs> These little bald spots are getting harder and harder yeah. to cover. But we want to go now to Angel Spirit and uh, what, what a spirit in that church that night. So sit back and enjoy some great music by Angel Spirit. Okay, for you guys that are with us. ...experience when we did the CD and uh, it was... For those of you who don't know us that well, that was our first opportunity to be in a studio, and we really had a good time. Um, it was a unique experience, and one I hope we get to do again sometime. And thank you all for all your support. You've been so good to us. Thank you. You ready? Now we're ready. Listen to story how Jesus died for me on an old rugged cross of Calvary. There he suffered, bled, and died on the cross was crucified and my Jesus will
Give Mama a big hand here. We are so proud she could be here with us tonight. It's been a touch and go situation, but I tell you what, y'all, as she goes off stage for a few minutes, I'm going to have a young lady come out that I was just talking about. Leah, come on out and join us. This is Leah Senior. She's from right here in Jasper, Georgia. She comes from a family with some incredible talent. Just to give you a little background on her, she has a great aunt that's in her 90s that plays piano and is an incredible musician from what I'm told. She has a sister who is a performer, entertainer, that has sang at Dollywood for a number of years, Kaylee, who just got married. And let me think, who? Oh, Bill Higgins. I mean, you know, he's the co-host of that show. Uh, I guess his name's Bill Senior. He sings with that other group, uh, that wonderfully talented group, First Mountain City Quartet, and we're so honored to have a couple of you guys here tonight. So you guys just bundle, uh, bear with us through the nerves, and I hope you enjoy her voice as much as I do. She has worked so hard to bail us out in a time of need and has a voice that needs to be heard. So. This is her third singing with us. Ever. Practice. Practice. <laughs> So y'all enjoy. Okay. I know your life on earth was troubled, and only you could know the pain. You weren't afraid to face the devil. You're no stranger to the rain. So go rest high on that mountain. Sun, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven. Love for the Father and the Son. Oh, how we cried the day you left us. We gathered round your grave to grieve. I wish I could see the angels' faces when they hear sweet voice sing. So go rest high on that mountain. Son, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven shouting love for the Father and the Son. So go to heaven and shout love for the Father and the Son. See what I mean, guys? She got it. She I don't got know that. if I like this or not. That makes me the oldest one up here now. <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> this next song is going to feature her just a little bit, and we hope you enjoyed it. It's a good old Southern Gospel hymn, a lot of our book, and it's called Holy Angels.
was precious. That, that was a mini Angel Spirit concert. Now, when we talk about the music, the, the music sets the tone, the music sets the mood for your day, the music sets the, you know, Old Rugged Cross is like my standard. Yeah. All four verses. I don't want no preacher that ends on two verses. I want four verses. <laughs> because we are approaching that day, that Easter Sunday, that, that old rugged cross um, will make a difference in so many lives. Selena, at singings, did you see people brought to Christ? Absolutely, absolutely. Did you, and you made a difference in so well, many lives. I, I, you know, I, I don't see really how I made that kind of a difference, but in reality, I guess we did. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't wanna take any of that credit. Um, because it wasn't for me, it was it was from God, and, mm -hmm. and, and I but just, one and song that touches a heart and turns that cold heart into something totally true. new and, and different. True. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. It is. So for how me, many, it's be how still. many people still follow you and email you and contact you that just tell you that music did? Maybe my husband came to church; he'd never been to church. Maybe my husband decided he would listen to gospel music. Have you heard some great stories from people? I have. I mean, you know, um, we were blessed to travel for about 10 years mm -hmm. as, a, as a trio. And we, um, one of my favorites is always to go to Waynesville, North Carolina and see my seventh grade school teacher, Charles mm -hmm. Holt and, mm -hmm. uh, and Trellis. And so mm -hmm. we've sang up there a couple of times. And, my favorite and to go to Waynesville is to eat at Clyde's Restaurant. I hadn't been there. Oh my goodness. Well, Let me tell you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't meeting if we ain't eating, right? That's right. <laughs> but That's right. Lusk Chapel is where they go now, and Jonathan Sluter, and he is so talented and has such a passion for, for the, the youth and, and, and worship service and songs, and, um, and it's just a great place, and I love going there. Mm -hmm. Love mm -hmm. going there. Miss them. And In fact, Charles and Trellis came down. Um, they had prayer for me at their church one Sunday evening, and they came down the very next Monday morning wow. and brought me a cloth that they had anointed. And I wear that cloth. Mm -hmm. I'm a believer, and oh, if yeah. anybody oh, yeah. has uttered a word of prayer for me, I thank God for all of those people every night. I yeah. can't name yeah. names because there's yeah. too many. Yeah. But I wear that cloth so that it touches my skin mm -hmm, all while mm -hmm. I'm doing ter uh, chemotherapy. And then I received another little swatch of, of cloth from Jackie Bramlett in Jasper, mm -hmm. and her church done the same thing, and mm -hmm. I'll wear it tucked mm -hmm. in too, so it's touching I my skin. I still have one in a frame that after JS went to be with Jesus, I framed it. Mm -hmm. And a church up in Hartwell, Georgia, did the same thing and yes. sent it to him. And it does make a difference. It does. It does make a difference. It yeah. gives you yeah. hope. It lets, you know, it's, there's so much hope. And where there's breath, there is hope. So I, I treasure it. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. real. Now, if people want to write you, if they want to send you a card, if they want to do a, can we give your address? I don't mind. I don't mind at all. It's 98 Cole, C-O-L-E Street, Jasper, Georgia, okay. 30143. And I do receive a lot of cards. And yeah. uh, I've kept them all. And uh, I get a lot of social media contact, you know, and um, I appreciate each and every one. I don't always get a chance to reply to each and every one, but I do give thanks to all of that mm -hmm. when I pray at night yeah, and uh, yeah. throughout the day because, you know, I just, if you can utter my name and it get through to the throne room, mm -hmm. I need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what's yeah. carrying me. That's yeah. what's got me this far. Now, so next week they'll retest blood again? They will. I'll go in on Monday and they'll do my blood work. I'm actually set up to receive treatment next Monday. Um, she just felt like oh, an extra week off is all mm -hmm. my body needed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going in tentatively planning to receive chemo and it's mm -hmm. a five hour treatment. Um, that I have while I'm there, and then they attach a bag of chemo to me with a pump that I wear and a little fanny pack that lasts for 46 hours, and then I go back 48 hours later and mm -hmm. have them um, DC that and dispose of the haz hazardous material. I mean, it's got to be properly disposed mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been blessed. I'm usually sick the day of chemo itself, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. that one day, and then right. I bounce back pretty quick. Yeah. So yeah. I've been so lucky. 
So it's good to have it on Monday and get it over with. So by it the time is. the kids or the grandkids come for the weekend. Now let's talk about the kids and the grandkids. You got some pretty fantastic girls. We have got have a wonderful son. And, and I've got two of the best stepkids and I don't even like to call them that. They yeah. are just all ours. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Michael and Christy uh, have a, a struggle with having a special needs child, a teenager mm -hmm. and a mm -hmm. little toddler as well. And Sierra and Trent have their t his two kids. Mm -hmm. and, and they're both law enforcement, so all three of the kids are law enforcement mm -hmm. there. And then my two girls have families as well as my son. It's mm -hmm. got a son and a, mm -hmm. another one on the way. And we might say that son might be a miniature fat man. Oh, Lord, he's just like his daddy, and I'm so afraid that this little Austin is going to be the fourth generation trucker down the tube. He loves his trucks. Yeah, yeah. But we have another little boy on the way, and his name will be Autry. Yay, And Yay. Uh, I have great kids. When I got my diagnosis, of, of cancer and was scheduled for my morning of treatment. I had been with the children on Sunday and unbeknownst to me, they all arrived at my house before I left wow. on that treatment morning, my first treatment, with a token of gift bag for Rick and me both to, to mm -hmm. a goodie bag, if mm -hmm. you will, and mm -hmm. a, a cover to cover up because it's always so cold mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things of that nature. But the best part was my sweet son saying a prayer. He prayed for me before wow. we left and it was just, you know, I. If I did have ever done anything good in my life, yeah, it took a village to raise my children. Yep, yep. As it does everybody. Yep. But I, I we've got some phenomenal kids. I can't say enough good about my kids. They're not perfect. No. But I love my. They're kids. not. <laughs> they're really not. <laughs> they're not. But they're pretty amazing. Pretty and amazing. And Michael and Michael and Sierra call often and check on me and stay concerned about me. I just I'm surrounded. Blessed. I'm Blessed. so surrounded yeah. in love. Yeah. Yeah. See that? Love never fails. Love never fails. Well, right now I want to share something with you, and I don't know if you've even ever heard this song, but I want you to, Caleb, turn it up. This is the word in me. And if we can put the word, we have a very special prayer request today. My granddaughter Ansley needs your prayers. Um, she, she is five and a half months pregnant. The um, baby's daddy sadly passed away last Sunday. He had a heart attack or a stroke. He was a severe diabetic. And Ansley is in a bad place. And she is um, five and a half months pregnant. She's scared to death. <clears throat> and she needs your prayers. And today, Dawn said, Mama, all my kids are saved but Ansley, and we're going to pray Ansley through this. So I chose a song. And it is Dorothy Howtower wrote this song 25 years ago, and it is a true story. So I want you to sit back and I want you to listen. And I just want you to think about this is. This has happened truly in life, and it can happen to you. If you don't know Jesus, you can figure him out. And this song will help you through it. Here we go. A young man was praying when God spoke to him. He said, you'll preach tomorrow a word that I'll give. But at daybreak the snow fell He was bound to his home He said, Lord, I don't understand I feel this message so strong And he said the word in me It cries in my heart Like fire in my bones It's been from the start
Okay, that's a great song. It was a good that song. is a great a song. Dear, you got to listen. You got to pay attention to every word and every verse. That is amazing. <laughs> okay, I have a couple of announcements we need to make. Marriage on the Rock. This is Friday, April the 22nd, 7 to 10 p.m., and Saturday, April 23rd, 9 to 3 a.m. Register online or call 772 359 7697. And tomorrow we are going to air the program with uh, Brenda Ryder, who was here, and we talked about this. It is amazing <clears throat> if you're getting married, if you are married, if you're thinking about getting a divorce, whatever you're going through, um, this is something that you need to pay attention to and learn. Love never fails, 1 Corinthians. And I said, it's so weird that we've, I've had that on there for years, but that's the theme of their event. And again, if you're interested, uh, it is the Rock Community Church is sponsoring this at 55554 Highway 64, Copper Hill, Tennessee. Be a part of this and again, you can call 772-359-7697 and ready to race the Soapbox Derby in uh, LJ, in, LJ, in Blue Ridge is going to happen on April the 30th and we will talk more about that next week. But if you want to be involved, please do. And it's over $1,000 in cash prizes and um, I happen to be one of the sponsors of it. So there you go. And again, it is something fun for all kids. And it's the Blue Ridge Soapbox Derby is a 501c3 nonprofit, and it is committed to continue good things for Fannin County's youth. So there you go. There you Thank go. you for there being you. here today. Thank, Thank you for, you for being me. so amazingly positive and strong. And God, you are you are God's greatest work. You are just He's amazing, isn't He? I'm just one of His. Isn't He amazing? <laughs> he is. Isn't He, he amazing? Is. So, and again, y'all, if you want a bracelet, I'm going to have some with me. So I will. Uh, you can stop by my office down in Ball Ground and pick one up. And uh, let's Selena strong. Let's keep her strong. Let's keep our faith going. Let's please continue to pray for her. Pray for everybody who is in a battle. And again, please pray for my precious Ansley and um, that this baby will be delivered healthy, wealthy, and wise. <laughs> That's right. So there you go. All right, we're going to leave you now where rivers, mountains, and truly good friends meet only at ETC. I'll see you again soon. Bye, y'all. Bye -bye.